Guinevere scrunched up her face, her tongue protruding slightly from her mouth as it often did when she was lost in concentration. Around her, lay the various ingredients she had been gifted from Dawson and the growers, along with the limited resources Sophie had found in her pantry. She was with the boxman's sister now, as she had offered to allow Guinevere to use her kitchen when making her special dinner. Sophie watched as the tiny girl before her worked so hard to get every little detail perfect. My, that looks so tedious. Mind telling me what you plan on making? She asked light-heartedly. Guinevere looked over her shoulder and smiled. Filet of beef a la rosine, potato croquettes, and for dessert, apple cake. She replied, turning back to her creations. Sophie's smile melted slightly in disbelief, before expanding even wider than before in surprise. Ooh, that's so fancy. Filets of beef a la rosa. What now? <laughs> Rosine. It's one of the dishes they taught me how to prepare back at the manor. <laughs> so I see. Sophie chuckled. Guinevere? Yes? I know you need to concentrate, but I find myself just so curious. Would it be too much of a bother if I chatted with you while you cooked? Her question prompted the young woman to turn around to face her. The look on Guinevere's face was one marked by both hope and utter disbelief. You... You, you want to talk with me? But, but I used to be a noble. Surely you know this. She looked down at her feet. Basso said that everybody knew, and you're his sister. Yes, I know about your past, but why would that dissuade me from speaking with you? Sophie asked, craning her head ever so slightly. Guinevere looked up sharply, her eyes shimmering with a pleasant glee. Really? But the others... the others who know, I mean, they, they aren't very nice to me. She started to look down again, but was halted as Sophie's left hand found and graced her saddened cheek. She drew Guinevere up, and looked into her sorrowful puppy dog eyes of wild green and yellow. But what she saw in them, both shocked and worried her. These eyes, were both of a frightened and confused little girl, and the unseen demon goddess within. Guinevere blinked. And when she reopened her eyes, the synonymous forms were even more prominent than before. Sophie couldn't quite see either of them clearly, let alone separately. It was like looking into two different dimensions. She just stood there, holding the nymph's flustered face in her hands. The sentiment which she had begun to offer, now long forgotten. Sophie? What is it? Guinevere's words cut like the clay more of a welcome savior through the dense haze and torment that now enshrouded her host. For a second, the older woman's pupils dilated, before she was able to regain her composure. She managed the weak smile, and bravely cast her eyes down towards Guinevere again. I... It's nothing, sweetheart. Guinevere smiled at this, banishing that second frightening form back into the recesses of her soul. Seeing this, Sophie shook her head, and crouched down to her level. When she was face to face with the concerned little nymph, she clasped both of her shoulders in a genuine apology. Garrett had told her all about Guinevere. What she was. How she wanted nothing more than to denounce that side of herself forever. Even if it cost her every ounce of her magic, and future. But in spite of his words, his warnings, nothing could have prepared her for what she had seen in those eyes. 
A cruel pang found her chest. No doubt Guinevere had sensed her fears. Only mere moments after the nymph had confided that everyone she had met within the bowels of the city harbored prejudices against her. Sophie had found herself blatantly doing the same. Guinevere, I'm so sorry. I know what you are and where you came from, uh, of your history. You do? Yes. Gary told me everything. He really thinks the world of you. <laughs> yes, I know that now. Guinevere blushed, turning her attention back to her meal preparations in order to hide her flushed expression from Sophie. But even so, well, I was unprepared for what I just saw in you. I have to admit, I've never actually had the pleasure of meeting a wood nymph. She offered. Oh. Is that why I frightened you? Guinevere replied meekly, beginning to stir the brown sauce that she was boiling for the main course. Guinevere, that's what I was apologizing for. No doubt you've already gotten enough of that from everyone else. I know what it feels like to be shunned and hated for something that you were born with. Something that you can't even help. This prompted the young woman to spin around again a bit more apprehensively this time. She did not wish to frighten her host again. You... do? With a solemn smile, Sophie nodded. I have a certain illness which prevents me from going out into the sun. Photosensitivity. My skin is especially sensitive to harsh light. I was born with it, you see. Whenever I do go out, I have to wear a cloak and a hood to protect my skin. I guess that sometimes makes me look a tad suspicious. And the fact that I usually only come out at night... Let's just say such activities can fuel a lot of ignorant rumors. Guinevere gasped. <gasps> Born with it? Uh, I'm... I'm so sorry. Does Basso have it too? No, Big Brother was blessed with the health in the family. Not that he's ever been especially grateful, mind you. Sophie rolled her eyes. You don't seem very fond of him. Guinevere took the apple cake out of the oven. Huh? Basso, you don't seem to like him very much. Her naive words caused Sophie to burst out laughing. <laughs> of course I like him. I love him. He's my brother. But then, why are you always so angry at him? Guinevere cocked her head. I'm not angry at him, Guinevere. Sure, I might want to knock some sense into him about all of his crazy binge drinking and unstable relationships, but that doesn't mean I love him any less. I just worry about the old taffer, that's all. It's what siblings do. I would do anything to make sure he's alright. She explained with genuine kindness. Guinevere listened intently as each word left her lips, her eyes glistening again. Sophie raised an eyebrow. You don't have anyone you feel that way about, Guinevere? No family? No friends? Well, no. I've never had any of that. Simmons wasn't my real father. I've been living with him for as long as I can remember, but... I always knew that he wasn't my father. I stayed and accepted him as such because I thought that he was the closest thing to a family that I would ever have. Even if he treated me badly, even after he made it agonizingly clear that he didn't love me back, I stayed. Guinevere, why? Sophie's own heart was pulsing with empathy for the ruby-haired woman who stood in her small kitchen, pouring her heart out to a complete stranger. Because I didn't think that anyone would ever care about me. Until I came here, that is. I used to think that all city people were bad. I don't remember much about my mother, but of all the lessons she instilled upon me, 
that message resonates with the most clarity. Guinevere's cheeks flushed a brilliant pink. But you... Ambasso... Garrett... I don't care what anyone says! The Watch, my father, even my mother! None of you are bad! Sophie stood there, listening to this heartfelt plea from the lost girl within her crowded kitchen. Feeling, as her face began to grow wet. She embraced her trembling guest. Guinevere, if anyone treats you like garbage, <laughs> they're full of shit. <laughs>